This is Sam Katz with Gallery Glass, and I'm here to speak with Keith Schweitzer, Director of Public Art at 4th Arts Block, and artist Amanda Browder. So, Amanda, can you tell me about the piece that you're working on for 4th Arts Block and the upcoming event? Yeah, so, hi everybody. Um, I'm working on a piece that's called uh, Good Morning. <laughs> um, it's going to be part of the 4th Arts Block Street Festival, and it's uh, the reason I named it Good Morning, actually, is that it's kind of a double meaning, um, kind of the idea of like a neighborhood, people walking on the street and you know, chatting with each other and it's a greeting that you do in the morning. You're like, hey, good morning, how's it going? Kind of lighthearted and familiar. Um, also the word good morning is kind of an expletive, you know, and I, I feel like when I put pieces up on the building, a lot of times they're this kind of like surprise within the environment, um, kind of visually with the colors and this kind of thing. And so good morning is kind of like a wake up, like, hey, get up, like, hey, what's up? So it's a kind of double meaning with that. So for the street festival, uh, we're going to be covering the building across the street from where we are right now. Um, and it's going to be on the facade of the building. And all the fabric that's part of the project has been donated. And all of the time people have come in and helped sew has been part of the uh, public sewing days that I've had at the space that we're in today. So what's the scale of the, the piece that you'll be creating? Yeah, it's roughly about, I would say about like, 45 feet by 30 feet, roughly around there, probably, but bigger actually, because you have to like wrap it around things and tie it down. So the whole piece in the end might be about like 60 feet by 30 feet. Would you say that you generally enjoy working in larger scale installations? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm from Montana originally. I'm very proud of my nice <laughs> <laughs> And so I, and I, I really appreciated like when I moved to Wisconsin after going to, you know, growing up in Montana and seeing the difference between having mountains around your life and not that human scale was really important to me and I felt very awkward being in a flat spaced you know environment and so a lot of my work kind of like reflects back into that idea of attempting to kind of remind people about our scale in the world um, maybe conceptually and physically. You've worked all over the world um, obviously all around the United States but internationally as well do you design for the particular location that you'll be exhibiting? Traditionally, I do. Um, I've done a couple pieces where, like, you know, I've showed them another like time with the same piece but a different location. Um, but yes, actually, I traditionally work with the groups that are there, um, find out the specs of the space. Fabric has like a, a plus and minus to it. Like, you know, it can be a little bit more flexible than wood or something that's rigid. So um, I can actually do it from afar a lot of times. I can say, hey, roughly, you know, how big is it? And if I kind of figure out the facade is like this, and then using basic math, I can construct a piece. So traditionally they are site specific. Would you say that your work is generally participatory or is it um, just intended to be viewed viewed by the public? It's a little bit of both. I mean a lot of times people, the biggest question that I get all the time is people asking me like, well how long is it up? Because a lot of times with fabric based work, um, you know people think it's going to be like the nitty bomb thing where it's stuck up there for a long time. I particularly only would prefer to have it up for like three or four days and then have it down. The reason I bring that up is that um, my project in the beginning has to do with sewing days, connecting with the public, me connecting with the community that's there, talking to people on the street, and I feel that that's part of the project for myself. And so that I find the participatory part, uh, whereas the piece that goes up for say three days, that's more of a visual, just like you know, connecting with the different people who meet on the street and kind of just seeing it. I will admit, I did this project in Greenpoint, Brooklyn, gosh, a year ago. And um, I put it up for three days, and the best part was meeting people on the street who were just like, what is this? This is bananas. <laughs> like, where did this come from? And just talking and engaging with the people who live down the street was the best part of the whole project. Um, so that kind of participatory aspect of it really makes me happy. Just kind of artists connecting with audience member on a very literal level. With that in mind, what would you say has been the most rewarding or meaningful installation you've created thus far? I don't think I can say that. <laughs> it's hard to, um, you know, I don't know if I can like clarify that as a good, like, oh, definitely, because each one has its own specific awesomeness. You right. Know, the one in Dumbo was great because it was really connecting with kids. The one in Port, like in uh, Greenpoint was connecting with like the Polish community, you know, because I just moved to Greenpoint for the first time. and. That was actually my reasoning for doing the project was to connect with the neighborhood that I was living in. And so, yeah, each one is separately different. The one in Barcelona, people sleeping in my piece for two to three hours. And they're like, oh, this is so cool. It's like the paradise. 
you know. I'm like, yes, please stay there. I mean, this woman's perfume, like, in, just infiltrated the whole piece because she was there for so long. So I don't know. Those are just, like, highlights of the project. So, Keith, you curated this upcoming um, event. Tell me about how you got involved with Fab and uh, about the road getting getting there. Well, uh, the Manus Project falls into the um, public art program that I run. So um, I took on the role of director of public art two years ago uh, before Dark Squad. And uh, we grew the program from just really being focused on East 4th Street uh, down through uh, sequential suites going south down to Allison. So we now have six art sites. And uh, the connection with it, I mean, literally there is a new fabric connected from one of the buildings with um, fabric coming down to the street, a uh, joint street festival where most of the members and community members will be, um, you know, uh, participating in that. Now you have a long history in uh, in public arts. Can you tell me about the progression and, and how you came to work with Fab and maybe some of your, your previous work? Uh, well, I've been doing public art and exhibition art for seven years. And uh, a lot of it has been transient and public facing. So a lot of the, the exhibitions that I would do in a temporary space would be demarred to a mural on the exterior. So I, when I started doing that uh, in Chelsea, Dumbo, and Brooklyn, um, the, they were, um, you know, there was definitely a connection with something being seen outside. And that's what would bring people in and see the rest of the exhibit. Well, what is some of you um, just told me about some of the other pieces that are, are going up below East 4th Street. Can you tell me about some of those? Yeah, um, well, I mean, let me backtrack a little bit. I mean, cur curating for like an, uh, an exhibition uh, is you know, like you're exploring something that you want to say as a curator. Uh, when you're directing a public art program in a community, you are um, exploring themes or and uh, ensuring that things connect to the community and, um, and it's not like public art, not like a gift that kind of like drops down from above and everyone goes, wow, this is like, you know, amazing. It's got to really kind of make sense and come up from within the community that it's, uh, that it's being shown in. Um, well, with, with that in mind, do you play another role in Fourth Arts Block um, with regards to planning the events or is your role specific to curating the, the public art? Uh, it's specific to I mean, I play a lot of roles in the Fourth Arts Block um, as, as the director, but it's specifically geared towards uh, the public art program. Beyond Amanda, what other artists have you been working with? There have been, from my experience, a lot of really exciting, um, uh, exciting events hosted by you, but also um, the murals that have gone up have been very meaningful, not only to, to me, but to the entire community. Can you tell me about some of those artists that you've worked with? Well, the scaffolding that Amanda is going to be um, gracing uh, um, with Good Morning, uh, Tom Sanford did an amazing array of seven four foot by four foot uh, uh, paintings that were uh, gilded I uh, icon paintings of the saints of the Lower East Side. So we had Ellen Stewart, who founded the Mama on this block, um, uh, Miguel Pinheiro, uh, you know, like he, he did, he did an awesome array of portraits that was on that scaffolding. Uh, that was one of the first larger projects I did as, as director of public art for Fourth Arts Block. Um, the, it, then as you go down to like East 3rd Street and East 2nd Street, we had cake on East 3rd Street for a year, and I loved the piece that she did for us. Uh, East 2nd Street has probably had the higher rotation rate of, of work. So we had like No Hope um, as a street art uh, installation. We had Page 47. Uh, now we have Shoyo and Yacht uh, just before what's up, and that's up right now. Just before that uh, was the, our collaboration with a, a local group called the, Antig the Antagonist Movement. And um, that is something uh, that is, uh, they did a ground mural for us in uh, the alley behind where CBGB did. Uh, so it's our third ground mural there, uh, but theirs is probably the most specific uh, to the location and the history of what was in that space. Um, so at the same time that ground mural was installed, the Antagonist Movement did a mural on uh, the ideal, way, ideal glass space on so right now we are on East 4th between Bowery and 2nd. For uh, viewers who are unfamiliar with FAB, um, what are the specific locations, specific other locations that uh, viewers can go check out the work? Yeah, so it, it delineates, um, if you go like Bowery and 2nd Avenue are the, are the two avenues, and the sequential streets start north of Houston. So East 1st Street 
there are three locations. Uh, East 2nd Street, there is one location. East 3rd Street, there's another one location. And then East 4th Street is, um, you know, constantly rotated. I was about to ask, so how often do you rotate the work? Uh, if it's a mural, mm -hmm. um, and we can, I'd like to leave it up for at least three months. Um, if it's uh, something that's more sculptural or might obstruct day-to-day uh, -day life of the block, then we can't leave it up as long. So it'd be a little bit more temporary. We just partnered with First Street Green in uh, this uh, project called the 12 by 12 project and had a 12 foot by 12 foot uh, artist residency house in the park on uh, Allison and 2nd Avenue. That's exciting. Yeah. So uh, we're also here today to talk a little bit about the upcoming event that yeah, Amanda is a... Fab Fest. Fab Fest. Yeah. Can you tell tell me what viewers can expect from Fab Fest? Fab Fest can be a little crazy, uh, but in a great way. And um, if you're if you've lived in New York for a long time, you've seen a lot of street festivals, and they're usually like sock festivals. You know, they sell socks and pillows and like you know uh, zeppelins and stuff. This is a uh, cultural institution uh, for for this community, and it's uh, it's been going on for a very long time. And once a year. Um, Block is closed off, and there are two stages. With uh, this is, I mean, there's over a dozen performing groups uh, on this one stretch of the block between Second Avenue and Tower One, um, in Sports Street. So you'll see performances by most of those uh, members, um, and then you also have one stage that's all music performances. And then there are booths that are not trying to sell you socks; they're trying to, um, you know, you'll, you'll actually be able to engage with the, the community. I know it's a huge staple in, in the community, that event, every year. So I think everybody's going to be really excited. Yeah. Awesome.